Welcome to 2021, ladies and gentlemen, and the first Monday mailbag of the year, guys. Yes, answering your questions from the Discord. This time, we are discussing fixes to war, targets for your Red Star promotion credits, hand rework, and a lot more, guys. And if you're ready for all of that, you know what to do. Find that like button, and yeah, let's go smash it! Alley flying. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you had a happy holidays. I am Paul, aka Valley Flying, and I hope you're ready for this video, guys. Yes, the first of the year, answering your questions from Discord. Now, if you guys are not already a member of the Discord channel and you want your question potentially featured in an upcoming Monday mailbag, then uh, yeah, join the Discord. And if you guys are here for the first time and have not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Triforce content and that bell. Hit that notification bell as well to get notified as soon as a new video is released but yeah it's been a while guys it's been a while since i've made a video and i am excited so without further ado let's get right into your questions first question of 2021 hope you had a great christmas with you and your family my wife and son had a blast well same to you brother i hope you had a great christmas with uh, your family and i hope all of you guys had a great christmas as well with your families as well and if you don't celebrate christmas because i know this is a worldwide audience i hope you had a great holidays and i hope you had a blast with your family i had a question about pim and t4 i have ghost all at t4 except for a basic but which orders should the others get now pim tech seems like a very specialized team great in dark dimension 4 possibly great in other game modes but i'm not sure if i'd recommend going too heavy yet until some other people uh have invested fully in that team and see how they really perform i've, I've seen a couple things but uh as far as t4 recommendations for this team though so with with that caveat aside as far as t4 recommendations uh the yellow jacket ultimate is very good stature has a few good ones she has a great special ultimate and passive ant-man has a great passive as well and if you want to go very minimal i think you just stick with the ones you have on ghost right now and those and that that'll be sufficient for your pim tech team uh second question which global team should i work on i have x-men cyclops wolverine colossus beast and psylocke nearly ready for dark dimension 3 or should i keep working on pim so i'm not sure if i really focus on either of these just for dark dimension 3 uh i think the best one of the best x-men combos in there is colossus and uh, uh phoenix jeez i almost forgot her name but uh cyclops wolverine colossus beast psylocke i'm not sure if they're that great and colossus without phoenix i'm not sure if he is that great either uh me you might want to focus some of your mutant gear on emma or mr sinister i think they'll have a lot more value than some of these other characters in dark dimension three now uh your other question is should i keep working on pim pim is going to give you a little more value in just dark dimension three dark dimension four the x-men are going to give you a little more value outside of that game mode so i guess it really depends on what you're trying to uh build up and what you're trying to work on don't have the resources to do both so i guess if you're going to go either pim or x-men it's going to be what is more valuable to you other game modes or dark dimension uh three and dark dimension four if it's dark, just dark dimension go pim tech if it's everything else i'll probably go these x-men characters but uh yeah i think uh, there's some things there's, there's some better characters that you can build up but uh just between these two i would if it was me i'd probably go x-men just because i think uh you're going through dark dimension once and i'd rather have the team that's valuable in many many game modes next question i hope you and your family had a very merry christmas from chicagoland well i hope you had a great very merry christmas as well brother had a light dusting of snow i'll send some your way please don't 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 send any snow our way <laughs> all right first time asking long time watcher thanks for the great content well thank you brother uh, a few of my friends starting alt accounts went straight into alliances that are doing ultimate seven they're very nice to us allow us to get a lot of end game stuff as we grow fast but end up running short on t2 materials the blue ones any suggestions on how to get more of them thanks again well uh you got a couple options F first you could wait until you get the heroes villains and some of these do more campaigns uh that uh, have these blue materials uh, as rewards for these campaign nodes you could wait until then might be a little while if you guys are running exclusive uh, ultima 7 right now the other thing is uh yeah you can go back to a lower alliance and get some of these blue materials I, I this is not a problem that i really see a lot of people have uh when i progressed i progressed when blue materials was a thing and then purple and then finally we got these gold t4 materials but uh I've, I've had abundance of all of this stuff for a while so i'm not sure what to do so those would be my recommendations either wait i'm not sure how much uh, you can wait to get to those uh chapter sevens of heroes and villains and then some of these do more campaigns 
or or go to a different alliance if, or, or or if there's a better suggestion in the comments let me know uh this is this is not something that i'm fully aware that you guys haven't ran into this problem in a long time but i guess uh, yeah for some of these players they're starting out joining these higher level alliances i guess this can be a problem with the blue material uh so yeah let me know guys uh valley hope you had an awesome christmas hope santa was good to you and the valley clan same to you guys i hope you hope you guys had a great holidays my question is uh, of the week is two parts what are your recommendations for symbiotes t4s i do have all the symbiotes just wondering what t4 uh to do first I've spent some, I don't have very many of these orange resource materials. All right, so when you're looking at the symbiotes, the three best are gonna be the symbiote, Spider-Man, Carnage, and Anti-Venom passives. Those should be your first three. After that, you have the anti, you got a bunch on Anti-Venom that are really good and a bunch of symbiote Spider-Man that are very good as well. Anti-Venom, you got his special, you got his ultimate. Symbiote Spider-Man, you got his ultimate, you got his basic. Uh, you could you could do some of these on screen, but I think if you wanna go very minimum, you go the passives for symbiote Spider-Man, Carnage, Anti-Venom. Then you go the special and alt for anti-venom and the ultimate and basic for symbiote spider-man that should get your symbiotes into a pretty decent place there's more that you could do but i think those are would be your better minimums especially if you're really really short on t4 materials second question do you play any console games i think the last console game i played uh probably super smash brothers with my daughter but before that probably the marvel's ultimate alliance 3 that's on the switch all, all we have is a switch right now because i know i don't have a lot of time for console games so i never got the new playstation never got the new xbox it's just it's just one mobile game right now that i primarily play and then maybe a few others on my phone but yeah it's, it's mainly phone games right now hey valley this is not a question but a clarification from more of your questions from the mailbag on 12 25 about the blitz fruity rotations and reset time i found that once you do the eighth free rotation i've never i've never done that so this is good information guys the cooldown time on your character is it is the blitz window switches from yellow gold and it shows how much time is left until the next reset so yeah so i guess if you have a big timer that's not two hours that's that's indicator that you're already on your uh free your eighth uh reset there and the reset time is each 24 hours after the blitz started not at the end of the day when your campaign uh energy is reset so okay so it resets every blitz rotation interesting okay i, I thought it would be the campaign energy reset but yeah i guess uh first-hand knowledge guys thank you for posting that brother and i hope this helps some of the people that were asking last week and i know there's another question about this uh this week so this this is the question guys hey valley first time in the mailbag hope you had a great christmas i hope you had a great christmas as well brother with the black order being the king of the hill do you see any future teams that could come out or be completed that could knock them off the pedestal maybe apocalypse and four horsemen an empowered avengers team maybe as guardians if they get odin and valkyrie keeping the great videos so i like all of those i think those are great choices apocalypse uh odin the an empowered avengers team i think they thematically it would fit if they knocked off the black order but uh so all of those teams there's probably a lot of other teams out there the maybe eternals things like that but if we're looking short term we got two teams that we don't know uh, the complete information about the whole team first is astonishing x-men we don't know the legendary jubilee we don't know what her full kit is going to be like and we don't have confirmation of the fifth member we did see a data mine about bishop that uh is likely that he's going to be the fifth astonishing x-men but uh yeah we we don't know his kid either even if he is the one that is coming to the game so uh there's a lot that we don't know about astonishing x-men so potentially maybe they're knocking off black order we also don't know a lot about this x factor team with the dad bros those are those two characters are so awesome imagine what the third fourth and fifth characters of this team are going to be potential black order killers i don't know uh it seems a little unlikely because cold just became uh farmable in the premium orbs before this holidays began but uh yeah if, if they were two teams in the near future i think uh, either x factor or astonishing x-men or or one of these big teams that you're talking about in the more mid and long term hey valley greetings from estonia i hope you had a happy holidays hope you had a happy holidays as well brother not so much question but an idea about war I didn't find much information about basically would it be nice to have some restriction on war defense especially think about limiting a war to have no repeating characters for example if someone in the room has placed asgard the roommate has to leave that team out so we could have 16 totally different teams to attack in a room as we have so many characters already they would make it come more as a nice touch as some deeper strategic element to work about the defense the same rule uh about a attack wouldn't be very player friendly but for defense it would be nice gets tiring to see the same eight to ten teams in every room so uh what do you think maybe drew has some rumors about war i've talked to drew 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 has no rumors since uh, 
for a while. So hopefully we'll see him soon in 2021, but he doesn't have any rumors, especially about war. But uh, you know what? I, I this this can pose some problems. Uh, you know, I think the goal of war was to have us use our entire roster. And while this would uh, solve the problem that you're talking about, seeing the same eight to 10 teams in war, uh, it wouldn't uh, allow us to use our whole roster. So I do like this outside the box thinking. I don't know if this is a solution to all the issues that are going on in war right now, but uh, I mean, you know, maybe maybe we have this as a couple season long test, like a like a season long test to see how the community reacts to it uh, if if it was like that and it was a positive reaction then keep it as keep it but if it's a generally negative reaction then go away with it uh i, I think that would be the solution but yeah I, i'm not sure if this allows us to use uh, our entire roster which i which i think was the plan for war when they first uh, brought it about hey valley hopefully your friends and family are staying safe and healthy through the pandemic same to you brother uh so scopely has said in the past that they hoped their war was not a time race and attempted to make unbeatable teams and scrape by making teams into counter those teams and yeah that's kind of what war is. Uh, you, they, it is a time race now. They brought these defensive teams in there and it slowed it down. But now it's back to a time race. My my wars usually end around the same time every day. And uh, that's, that's the 8 a.m. after the reset. So, yeah, it, it, it's like that. So, uh, what are the solutions that you're proposing? Uh, anyways, think about adding more teams to defense beyond 8, maybe 10, even 12 to stop the race. So, that would be one solution that would uh, slow down the clears as well. Uh, and then it, it would be make us place more teams. Uh, this may have some of the uh, newer alliances struggle, but even with those uh, shield minions that you could place there, I don't think it'd be too much of a problem. I, I don't know if uh, that's... If that's the best solution, the most player-friendly solution, so uh, that 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 could be something though. That's I know that's been talked about for a while by the community. Allow lines uh, to add debuffs or buffs to a room, which adds value to the room even when taking out. Example: Allow cargo base to have defense down even when not adjacent to security. These rooms give additional 25 points when cleared or adding ability block to a bridge allows an additional 50 points. Food for thought. What do you think? So I, I kind of like this idea. I, this adding these little bonuses to these rooms are pretty cool and i thought that's what they're going to do when they talked about adding room bonuses to war uh they, they were looking for solutions back in the day i don't know if you guys remember around the time when colson came out they're looking for some solutions and we started to see data mines about room bonuses and how you could save up your stark tech and a lot of the community was thinking that you know this this stark tech is what's going to be used to upgrade these rooms that has not come out and they went with these war defensive teams instead Hopefully they add something like this, something that like you're mentioning uh, in 2021 that will make war a little more fun, not have uh, these full clears, but because it is a race right now. So I, I like the room bonuses though. That was something that they were thinking about doing in the uh, past. They they scrapped that and I, hopefully that is something that they will bring back in 2021 because I like that idea and I like the idea of theory crafting. Uh, 10, 12 teams and war defense may work out, but it will shift the strategies a little. And it, it may just be a band-aid till we get more teams and there will be an exact same situation. But I, I like these room bonuses. Uh, yeah, because I, th I think that's more of a longer term solution and, and it will give us a way to we can use Stark Tech other than just on war credits or elite war credits or on those elite four red star orbs. Uh, what are your thoughts on the first five to take into DD4 or the first five to take into DD4? Thoughts about a sub until sh Ghost is farmable. So uh, who I'm thinking right now, this is based on some of the community and not just based on how great the character is, but based on how little resources they could use, especially of these uh, gear 50 uniques ghost seems to be a great choice for dark dimension four i'm thinking she might be one of the first characters that i bring in because she has those dark dimension four bonuses and uh yeah the first node that you're gonna hit that have restrictions is gonna be that global section ghost has that global tag so ghost is probably gonna be one of my first ones if you don't have her uh one of the other characters that i'm thinking of taking in is zemo he looks pretty good uh, and he doesn't use a lot of resources as well. Thanos, great character for the Black Order and doesn't take a ton of these Gear 15 uniques. Sinister and Emma are also in there. So I think right now, and this may change. I'm not even level 80 yet. So by the time I hit level 80, it may change. But right now I'm thinking my top five will be Ghost, Zemo, Thanos, Sinister, and Emma. And another character that's not totally useless that takes very, very low amount of Gear 15s is Sabretooth. So as far as a replacement for Ghost, definitely not as good. Doesn't do the same thing as Ghost. He's, he doesn't have all those DD4 bonuses. He doesn't have that percent based attack but 
if you're just looking to get in or go, Sabretooth is an option there because he doesn't take a lot of those gear 15 pieces. And he's not like a shield trooper. That's totally useless outside of that. He fits on that Emma Rodders team very well. So Sabretooth might be a good option for a ghost if you don't have the resource for her. But yeah, don't, don't expect any of the same kind of level that ghost is going to do. Sabretooth is is not as good as ghost with blitz coming for cole decent offers and somewhat availability in orb should the community get together and pick a different hero to be offered for dd4 completion so i think this one the voting's already done on this one so i'm a little late with this question but i think the community did pick cole and cole won so i think that's who is going to be picked i'm with you though i think with cole's blitz uh players can get some shards there we have uh decent availability in the, pr uh, the premium orbs i know he's a light increased drop right there just like with yo-yo but uh yeah i would have picked ghost as well but yeah i think this question is a little i'm answering this one a little late uh maybe when that comes available uh in a, or for the next six months like ghost I, I i i voted for ghost actually so uh that but i think it's gonna be cool i think this question is null but i think uh, I think Ghost would have been a better selection for the overall player base. But for people that don't have call unlocked or need an extra star on, star on call, this allows them to get their black order. So it's not it's not the worst pick, but I, I, I think personally, I would have preferred Ghost. But yeah, it's, 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 it's a good pick. Hey, Valley, first timer here. First, you know, in YouTube channel, love your work. Keep it up. What are your when when you're autoing ultima 7.5 with the symbiotes do they all use the iso healer or the Remin the ones remedic suggested so i'm using the ones remedic suggested right now before i really built them up uh as far as their levels and their gear i was using a healer tag on them or the healer class on them for iso 8s made them survive a little more but right now this is what i have on my symbiotes guys first symbiote spider-man is a raider we also have anti-venom as that striker level four striker we have a level four striker on venom as well level four skirmisher on carnage and then scream has that level four raider so these are what i have on my symbiotes right now and they are able to auto ultimate 7.5 in the middle i still need to watch them in the beginning to make sure that uh, nobody accidentally dies particularly anti-venom and then make sure i'm watching at the end to make sure that that nobody really uses their cooldowns like they shouldn't i want to make sure their cooldowns are set up for the next node but other than that yeah they can fully auto most of the nodes in ultima 7.5 and that's that's the classes i have on them guys all right, next question though. Hey, Valley Greetings from El Paso, brother. Quick question. Who would your top five, seven red star targets be? Ooh, I don't know if this is gonna be a good question, but Thanos, uh, he's the only character that I spent promotion credits on and was well worth it. Uh, with a six red star Thanos, I was able to punch up a little bit against Black Order, but now, now with the seven star Thanos, I'm able to punch up big against Black Order in mirror matches. So uh, Thanos, awesome pick for that. Call is another great pick if you're really looking to beef up your Black Order. Uh, I'm not sure if you need a full seven star on him, but for me, once I get the gold stars on him, that might be a target for myself. Black Bolt, very, very good character. One of the best characters in the game now still. So that's going to increase his damage. That's going to increase his survivability. So if you're using him a lot, that's another great character. Uh, Sinister, Emma, both of those Marauders. Sinister is kind of future-proof because he can clone a lot of characters and make a strong, strong clone and not only is another red star on Thanos or on Sinister going to help him, it's also going to help his clones. And Emma, Emma's just a great character. I think uh, some of the limitations for some of these characters will be the gold stars. Like my Emma, my call, not at seven red stars, not at seven gold stars yet. So it wouldn't make sense to put that seventh red star on them. But uh, they're very good characters. Uh, just remember when you're when you're picking characters to use with these silver promotion credits, ask yourself if upgrading these characters. Is it going to help any content that you're not able to pass? For me, big punch-ups in Arena with that 7-star uh, Thanos. If if any of these other characters are going to help you in a particular game mode that you're using a lot, then do it. If not, and it's just for a luxury because it looks cool, it's going to help you in one game mode, then I might wait on it a little bit. But yeah, usability, very important for your promotion credits and very important for your key forwards, guys. Usability, very, very important. Don't, don't invest in characters that you're not using a lot. Valley Fine, since Cable and Bishops are mutant from the future, any thoughts on that having a tag or synergy together? Uh, I think it would be very, very fitting. I would like to see that. Uh, what, what's going to actually happen when they come to the game, though? If Bishop comes to the game, it was data mine, but uh, yeah, I, you know, data mines change all the time. So uh, we'll see. We'll see if he comes to the game. But yeah, it's, it's, they're both time traveling mutants. So it would make sense to have them have some synergy. But whether they will, 
who knows uh wish you and your family a very happy healthy new year in advance brother so i hope you guys all have a great happy healthy prosperous wealthy 2021 brother but uh and all of all of you brothers and sisters out there all right my question do you eventually think black widow will be placed on a military skill team I'm still on the fence about investing T4s on Killmonger because I'm worried that uh, he is nothing more than a placeholder at this point until Black Widow movie comes out and she get moves. It's very, very possible. Uh, I was expecting a lot more synergy with Black Widow and these military skill characters, especially Red Guardian and Yelena. She has a little bit of synergy with Yelena, but not a lot. So it is very possible that this is not their final team for any of them. Uh, so yeah, maybe, maybe Red Guardian, Yelena, and two other characters will go with black widow on a full team but that's that's where they stand now I, I i would hold off it's you know you could if unless unless putting those t4s on killmonger is going to prevent you from doing any content right now then you, you could hold off you could hold off and these see what happens with these uh, wait till the black widow movies announced see uh, see if her kid is getting any changes see if uh, we have another team for this military school team but uh, i i i it's not a bad thing just to save if you're not i'm i'm, I'm sitting on like a thousand t4s because i'm not sure what to do with it right now so it's not, it's not the worst thing to uh, save uh very merry late chris a uh, merry late christmas too i can't read this morning <laughs> it's the first of the year it's, i haven't been i haven't been doing this for about a week guys i want to thank you for all you do for the community and all the positivity you bring with your advice i finally Managed to be DD2. Now I have Ultron. What do you recommend for T4 priorities? A bit short on ability mats, and I can see Ultron make a huge difference in many game modes. I don't want to make upgrading him a priority. Yeah. So even even now, even even as a character that's uh he's a very old character, older character, he still is in the meta, and I still use him all the time, especially in Ultimus uh 7.5. So uh T4s for Ultron. Uh, what what is uh, I think I think it's special is the best one I think that's the first one you do it's up for debate if you want to do his passive or his ultimate next I think they're both good and I think you eventually should do all three of them, the special the ultimate and the passive and then if you're a completionist like me you could do the basic as well but if you're really short on t4 abilities you could skip that basic but uh my my recommendation is special first and then passive or ultimate is up to you and then do do the three of them and you could save the basic that's that's ultra ultimus all right, uh, Ultron, Ultron. <laughs> hey, Valley, not sure how close you are to DD4. I'm on level 79 right now, so not, not there yet. But uh, do you think Ultron would be perfect for DD4? His bots give speed up, provide healing, can rewind, turn meter, and does nice damage. Is he, is he being overlooked because he is mediocre in DD3? Uh, he has a little synergy with Yellow Jacket as well. So on certain nodes, on certain times, he's going to be very good. The problem with Ultron, the same problem that he had in Dark Dimension 3, he has long cool and a lot of the raids as well has very long cooldowns so if you if he gets killed before you get a chance to get his cooldowns reset he's gonna be kind of useless on that note until until he gets his cooldowns back and he could use his special and you could use his ultimate uh, that, that's the main problem plus ultron is very very uh t for or t gear 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 tier 14, gear tier 15, even gear tier 13. Very, very expensive as far as that. He is one of the characters that takes some of the most uh, unique pieces, the mini uniques and the mini, mini uniques, uh, these orange gear pieces. He takes a lot of them. So it's a couple arguments against Ultron, but in any other non-Dark Dimension mode, he's, he's going to be very, very good. But specifically for DD3, DD4, not, not one of my top recommendations, especially considering his cost is so high to upgrade him to the gear 14, gear 15. Greetings and warm wishes from Florida, brother. Two very different questions I got for you today. Oh, I'm looking forward to them. Uh, do you think next RTA season will have Zemo shards again? Or will Scopely rotate someone else in? And from a marketing perspective, it makes sense that they rotate someone else in. Because if everybody already got Zemo and we're expecting the same character over and over, it gets kind of boring. So just from a marketing perspective, I do think they're going to have a different character. But who knows he hopefully does some surprising things sometimes but i i think it's gonna be another character for this one and also does skipping an ad while watching your videos cost you some money i'll gladly watch if it helps you at all uh i'm not sure i'm, I'm not <laughs> i've had a channel on youtube for a while but i don't know all the ins and outs so uh if you can cool if not then uh, there's a lot of other ways to support the channel and a lot of, some of them are free down below as well so uh you can you can support the channel that way but but just by watching i i thank you for watching brother so yeah, I, I'm not sure about the ads and how all that works. I should. I should. I should know better. Hey there, Valley. Happy and safe Christmas from the UK. Happy and safe Christmas from the US, brother. Been watching some of the videos of GD4. Noticed there's a lot of players taking in Zemo. 
at the moment i have t4 only as passive but wondering if these guys have also done his special and alt thanks for the content so i can't speak for the others but i was going to show you my zemo and i'll talk about my plans for zemo now one of the reasons that i think a lot of people are taking him into dd4 is it does not take a lot of these gear 15 pieces to to build them up to gear 15 not as not as many as another character like ultron or someone so i think they're taking him in because he's a good character and he doesn't use a lot of the gear 15 uniques but i have done his passive i have done his special i'm probably gonna do his ultimate probably waiting till uh till i get to level 80 and i see what other people are doing as well but i'm probably gonna do the ultimate I'm probably gonna wait on his basic though but i did do his special i hope this helps and yeah zemo zemo looks to be one of the early characters i think that could uh really help you in the global nodes so yeah not not a bad choice to bring into dd4 all right next question though hey valley uh, happy new year from brazil happy new year from the u.s uh i'm having pretty late to the part but let me say die hard is not a christmas movie it's the greatest christmas movie ever i i agree with you the tick so here's my question since i started playing msf i've been focused on unlocking characters and right now, I'm only missing Doc Ock. My problem is that I have so many teams and characters with average to below average power and not a single strong team. So I, I had that problem way back in the day as well. Right around, the, I think, Ultimate 7 started and War started. And I'm like, you know what? I'm building this wide roster, but I don't have any strong teams. So I, I actually, not on remembering, I think it was right when War started. So I was like, I got to build some of my strong teams. And two of the strong teams right now in the game one of the best arena teams i'm not the best arena team black order so if you have all the characters uh you can't really go wrong with black order or you could go more for a raid viable team and build up your symbiotes i think those are the two uh teams that are going to be the most bang for your buck if you just uh and i think if you focus on those two teams it'll be great in arena and you'll be great in the raids and then war all that other stuff you can start focusing on some other teams building them up one by one but uh go to black order or symbiotes or vice versa then do the other one and then start so focusing on some of your war offense teams that's the way i would bring build your team so hopefully it helps and it's up to you whether you value uh arena more or the raids more that's that's who you should do first and then do the other one next hey valley do you find it weird that arena war raid and real-time arena all have timers but blitz which means to rush your opponents does doesn't also what do you uh know now that wish also what do you know now that you wish you knew sooner oh that's a tough question uh I don't know. I, I've made a lot of mistakes in my day, and I think I've learned from them. So I don't know. I, 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 I'm not sure if uh, knowing these things that I knew sooner would have uh, screwed up my learning process. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on this question right now. But as far as uh, arena, raid, war, real-time arena, if you look at all those modes that have timers, they're all related somewhat to other people's rosters. So arena, you're fighting other people's rosters. In raid, you're working at that with your other teammates from your alliance. Uh, same thing in war and you're fighting other people's roster in real-time arena you're actually playing somebody else so it makes sense that all of these modes have timers whereas true pve content when you're only playing uh things from the ai like blitz like the campaigns like dark dimension there's no timers so the modes that involve other people have timers like like the ones you mentioned the modes that don't don't have timers that's that's what i've noticed but uh if there's some exception guys let me know in the comments uh but yeah, I'm, I'm i'm gonna be thinking about the next question the second part of the question what do i know now that i wish i knew sooner interesting let me let me know your thoughts what are what are what are you guys thinking on that one uh, maybe i'll get some ideas from you but uh i, I kind of like the learning that my mistakes give me and and you guys know you guys see on my channel i make a lot of them <laughs> all right but what if uh for iron man wave one gave him empowerment he turned into hulk buster that would be cool uh and this is based on the top five who need a rework video and wolverine is one of the empowerment characters for maybe apocalypse for future edition of the game there were two characters to be mainstream again i i would like that i i think with that thanos empowered mechanic that they introduced with the black order it gives them a lot of options that they could do at that with other characters so making turning iron man into hulk buster if he's with certain characters would be cool turning wolverine into this strong meta character if he's paired with certain characters would be cool giving them a totally different kit i like that and i hope they'll go further with that for uh this empowered state you know whether it be for those two characters or other characters uh there's a lot of different versions of the same marvel character and it would be a nice addition to have them all into game in, in some logical way 
Uh, what do you think of this? The way Iron Spider-Man is obtainable, having Iron Man to be present on the field, turning Spider-Man into the Iron Spider. So that, that's another cool way to use Empowered, yeah. Spider-Man, if Iron Man's on the field with him, he turns into Iron Spider. Uh, that's, that's, I like, I like that. I like this idea, uh, but only, but only if it's empowered though. I, I wouldn't want another Peter Parker in the game. We already got two Peter Parkers in the game, but I, I like this, uh, empowered version of, uh, Spider-Man. Would it be cool dynamic? Yes, it would. Would, uh, be a part of Iron Man's passive when T4 or level four, would Iron Man make more use of what he has currently done? Oh, I, I actually like that even better. When they have that T4 in there, then he becomes empowered, uh, what is empowered uh, Iron Spider. I, I like it. I like it. Maybe not in Iron Man's, but in Spider-Man's to, to make him into that. Or if you have to make it more difficult to obtain, Spider-Man has to be five or six or seven stars for it to happen. Oh, you're making it more challenging. But I think, I think this post gives the devs a lot of ideas of what they can do with uh, characters that they've been wanting to come to the game and uh, they're not sure what to do with skins yet. So yeah, I hope this gives the devs some ideas for 2021, brother. Uh, oh my goodness, this is a long question. All right. <laughs> What is up, brother? Green is to Cozy, Minnesota. Two-part question slash comment. Saw the videos with OMG about iconic homeless characters. How about adding Craven and Sandman as more chargeable for Sinister Six? Doc, I love it. I love it. Get the band back together and then uh, make make some other Sinister Six teams. All right. Then for Spider-Man, bring the Into the Spider-Verse team with Spider-Man, Miles. So I guess we would need someone else for Young Avengers if they took Miles off of that. But I would like to see Spider-Man and Miles paired up again. Spider-Man 2099, Spider-Gwen, Silk or Penny Parker, but Silk has already been in MCU. I don't remember her in the MCU, but uh, I do remember her in Future Fight. And she was a very good character in Future Fight. So I would like to see her come to Marvel uh, Strike Force as well. But uh, where was, was she in the Into the Spider-Verse movie? Where, why am I not remembering that? But yeah, it, it would be cool. I, I would like all those characters. Second part, with our ever-growing rosters, do you foresee additional teams added to war? So this is a question as well. I am not sure what they're planning to do. This could, uh, adding going from eight to 10 or 12, uh, would would slow down the process which is one thing that they said they didn't with the devs didn't want to see happen as much as those full clears happen so quick and that would help with that but i kind of like that war room bonuses i think you know a after a while going from eight to ten would solve things for a while but you know months down the road when we get more characters added to the game we're going to be the same scenario of full clear tapping so early so i think that war room bonuses would be a more longer term solution but yeah, I don't know. Why are we about it? How about some World War points for the RTA wins? They, they could do that with all these other seasons. We'll see what happens. We'll see how much paying attention or how much they've been paying attention to the comments on uh, on Reddit and Facebook and Discord and all that stuff and see what they do to change real-time arena when season two rolls around. Uh, what's up? Greetings from Mars Valley. What's up from Earth, brother? I was wondering, when Emma dies, does her speed bonus go away or does the effect keep going until after she dies? I think, by the way it's worded, I think it stays in there because I think she permanently removes the speed bar of the enemies, but I am not sure. I've not tested this. I've not play tested this. If you guys know for certain, let me know in the comments though, but yeah, it's, it's not very consistent. I know Nobu's passive still remains even after he dies. And there's some characters as soon as they die, the passive goes away. So uh, I, I think Emma's is going to be the same just by how it's worded, but uh, yeah, not 100% not on that one. What's up, brother from Chicago? First time I asked you a question, but I would love your opinion. All right. Uh, hand rework. Same revivability mechanics as Red Skull for Nobu. I love it. Same stealth mechanics as Loki for hand surgery. Yes. A uh, few tweaks for minions, but at least uh, bring in Typhoid Mary. I am not familiar with Typhoid Mary. I, I know Madame Gao has been in the Netflix series, so... I would think she'd be a more popular character, but I've heard his name mentioned a lot. So I guess uh, people that follow the comics, uh, Typhoid Mary is a, important, a very important part of the hand. This is making me invest time with the Black Hole. This is my bottom line roster. As always, keep the content coming and good luck heading into DD4, brother. Oh, yeah, it's going to be happening uh, within the next few weeks or so. I think I'm going to be hitting level 80. So, uh, but yeah, I like the hand rework. Hand is a very, very good candidate to get reworked this year. I'm hoping it happens. Uh, one of the big things Dev said in 2019 19, we went to the offices. They want every character at least be usable. And the two factions that had not had a rework at all. The one you mentioned, Han, and then the Ravagers. So I'm expecting, or maybe not expecting. I'm hoping both of them get reworked sometime in 2021. And Hand be very, very good, man. They've been they they were great in the beginning. That's just because we had so many minion teams, but uh falling off. Huge victim of power creep. But I, I would like to see that, yeah. 
uh that rework that revivability for nobu plus plus keep his same passive so he still revives people would be uh be cool It'd be cool all right would like your opinions on my plans for dd3 i plan on taking hella min thanos ma that's very good so far global shuri sinister phoenix and emma uh for city use the simba so all of those though that's gonna get you to dark dimension three very quickly they're they're good characters uh you got all the required ones the only one that you don't really have is ghost but i don't know if she's required at this point uh maybe for dd4 but uh the only the only issue you may have is having all that orange gear because uh, you got how many how many uh, mutants in there? You got one, two, three mutants. You got a lot of sy you got the symbiotes. That's a lot of alien spores you're gonna need. And then Hella Min Thanos Ma. You could keep all of them. They're they're all good characters right there. So uh, yeah, great 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 teams. Uh, just just uh, watch watch your resources because after Dark Dimension three, you got Dark Dimension four to worry about. So you don't want to spend them too uh too abundantly on, on certain characters that you may not be using in dark dimension four hey valley i'm smashing it here in colorado nice brother i just got back from there uh is there a list of what passive remain after a character dies and what doesn't oh we were just talking about this one not sure about the emma one i know the noble one does remain after he dies and i'm not sure which do and which don't so this this would be a good one if, if anybody knows this list for sure and has done the play testing on what passives are still going to be there let, let me know i would like to see this as well uh how about a list for whose passive works during a stunt and who does it oh i'd like to see this as well uh if there is a list i don't know about it but if there is a list please either tag me on discord or leave a message in the comment guys because yeah I, I would like to see that i'm sure somebody's done some play testing on this see what what is actually happening when they die or not uh hey valley happy new year happy new year brother i would consider myself mid game i haven't yet started duty 3 i'm looking to get my people started but having even completed the doom campaigns that should i put a priority on the doom campaigns and get these done as fast as possible or my mutant heroes and humans aren't really built up yet only black bolt and yo-yo ready but even uh, for the later notes i'm severely underpowered is it worth putting gear and gold into people i really don't use uh, I would try to put it on people that you're using. Uh, and I think the campaigns, especially to farm the character shards and the gear are very important. So uh, for me personally, I probably would focus on the campaigns first. I know some people would rather focus on Dark Dimension 3. The thing about Dark Dimension 3, you're not getting a ton of great rewards from Dark Dimension 3. You're getting some promotion credits. You're getting some stars for Ultimus but other than, and, and some gear. But other than that, you don't have a big reward like Ultron or Doctor Doom. So if it was me i would focus on the campaigns first get those nodes farmable make may allow my roster to be built uh down the road because it can getting the three stars on all these campaign nodes is going to help you with your gear and your character shards so i would focus on that first and then go back and do d3 uh i think i think that's i'm not sure if that's the way it's meant to be uh played but i, I think it's going to make it a lot easier uh, for you and uh, maybe in the short term might hurt you because you're not getting all the orange gear maybe you're not getting into dd4 as soon but i think in the long term you're going to be better off going for those campaign notes before you get into dark dimensions brother or dark dimension 3 particularly because you already are i'm assuming you already have ultron and finished dark dimension 2. hey valley greetings from vienna austria and a happy new year to you and your family same to you brother all right my question is there an indicator how many blitz rotate free blitz rotations i have left out of the eight per day not that i know of if there is one let me know in the comments guys but uh, i do know from the previous question when they're all used up I, I think it said it turns yellow and then there's a timer for when the whole rotation cools down and you could get these uh, two hour ones again so uh i i think there's one at the end but uh, as far as i know there's not one to indicate how many free ones you have left but if there is let me know in the comments, guys. I have a question regarding the raid season. Is there any way to know what ranking you will get? Like, say, if you had 10 million raid season points so far, where that would place along the raid rankings? Uh, not that I know of. I know people tracking Blitz, and it runs kind of similar to Blitz. It's blind, so you can't see where you are in the rankings unless you're, like, in the top 100, but uh, it's blind. So unless people start tracking where each of the cutoffs are for the different percentages, uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to see exactly how much points you need for a particular tier so uh if there is one if somebody is tracking that let, let me know in the comments but i've only seen tracking for blitz and not the raid seasons but uh yeah if, if anybody does let, let me know in the comments hey valley happy new year got a question about raids my alliance is currently 7.1 or Ultima 7.1. We do 60% pretty consistently. I use Symbiotes as my main raid team. They work fine, but aren't a great auto team. Uh, so they're not a great full auto team. You could use them in the beginning. You need to watch them in the beginning. 
middle, you could fully auto. And at the end, once there's about five enemies remaining, you hit basic, basic, basic to get the cooldown set for their next node. Uh, from that sense, they're a pretty good team. But if you're looking to fully auto, the teams that I used to use was Thanos, Ebony Maw, Black Bolt, Minerva. I still actually use that team. Right now, I'm using Ultron, and I'm not doing full auto because, like I said, with Ultron, you need his cooldown set up properly. But uh, another character to use instead of Ultron would be uh, Emma Frost. So uh, I think that team would work pretty good on full auto for Ultimate 7.1. Uh, let me know how it works out for you. Let me know in the comments, brother. Hey, Valley, what T4s do you recommend for Ghost in DD4? Happy New Year, bud. Well, happy New Year, bud, to you. Let's go. I'll, I'll show you what I have on Ghost right now. I'm not properly set up for DD4 yet for Ghost, but I'm thinking the best are going to be the passive right here. And I like, I like T4s that do other things than just damage and this does a bunch of different things uh we got a we got the uh ultimate here that does a bunch of different things stealing more health from enemies more damage to enemies and then the special just adds 50 percent damage to the primary target doesn't seem like a great one the basic just adds 50 percent damage to the primary target it doesn't seem like a great one unless you're using her super heavily i think you could get away with just going ultimate and passive but uh that that's that's what i'm recommending right now but of course i'm not in dark dimension 4 yet so uh that recommendation may change once i get in there service from germany valley happy new year first happy new year first to you as well uh could it be possible to add a attack history to arena mode something like this uh so yeah we got we got something that we talked about for a while and i think this is something that the community has been wanting for a while just to see what's going on on arena defense and you know the devs they, they have a little amount of hours and time so i think this is not a huge priority for them uh but i would like to see this i would like to see some attack uh defenses see how my defense is doing see if i'm getting wins or i'm losing every single time this would be nice to uh kind of switch up my defense see based on what people are doing as far as attack so would be nice but uh, again it's, it's about resources of time and this is one of these quality of life changes that would be nice but i'm not sure how much time they're investing in these quality of life changes but uh with a lot of these quality of life changes they just seem to be coming to the game we don't get a lot of advanced notice about it we don't get a lot of hype so uh hopefully one day there'll be a patch notes and say what was just added to this patch and hopefully get something about uh arena defense history i, I think that's something that uh, a lot of players have been looking for for a little while uh happy new year happy new year to you as well with red guardian coming to the game will my seven red star 95k drag be more useful than red guardian uh yeah for at least a little while uh that's a very strong drax you got there and i think it's going to take a while to get those gold stars to put those uh, gear pieces on red guardian to possibly get some red stars on red guardian i mean seven red stars is pretty hard to get so uh yeah i think your drax is going to be more useful than red guardian for a little while now if we're talking about a pure military skill team uh red guardian i think is going to be more useful uh up to a certain point obviously you got a very beefy drax so your red guard isn't getting to be built up pretty pretty good for him to be more useful than your drax but yeah i think eventually if we're comparing apples to apples built up at the same level drax uh excuse me red guardian is a way better character than drax but your drax it's, it's gonna be a while before you build your red guardian that he's gonna be uh overtaking drax as far as uh the value that he's gonna add to the team howdy valley i've just seen one of the loading streams tips mentioned richter as shatterstar's boyfriend do we think there's a reasonable enough indication of his membership in the x factor team i think it is they usually don't mention too many characters uh that aren't eventually coming to the game uh there, there may be some exceptions that i'm not remembering but pretty much i think everybody that they mentioned in the game has eventually come to the game so i think eventually richter will come maybe as a member of the x factor team like you mentioned uh, i think that that is a pretty big hint that they put in there either either on purpose to try to uh to try to sway us in a different direction or on purpose because it's actually coming or it was a mistake and like oh we we mentioned this too early so it's hard to say with all the pushbacks that went over with covid but i think eventually richter will come to the game i'm not sure who he is though so it'll it'll be a surprise to me when he comes to the game but i hope he's a cool character and i hope he makes this x-factor team stronger if he is another member of this x-factor team hey valley hope you had a happy holiday i hope you have a happy holiday as well uh i got my dd3 time run finished over the holidays that is nice i have about 450 gold promo credits i'm considering taking both thanos symbiote spider-man to seven red star both are almost seven yellow so here's the thing remember if you if you use those promo credits 
you're getting zero benefit until you get that seventh red star on them so just just keep that in mind it might not be the worst thing because you may be very close to giving these seven gold stars and uh this, with the rate that these characters pop up in the store you may not see them for another two months so might not be the worst thing but keep in mind you're gonna get zero benefit until you get se that seventh gold star on them uh thanos i think is a very good choice if you want to bring him up especially if you're running that full black order team in arena like i said previously he allowed me to do some pretty big punch-ups in black order mirror matches so would it be the worst thing see me spider is a good character the other characters you mentioned taskmaster scream mr sinister is a pretty good choice stock Ock as well but if you only have him at uh five gold stars I, I probably wouldn't be investing a seventh gold star for doc ock as well but sinister is not a bad choice because he is a future proof character because of his clone mechanic but as far as symbiote spider-man taskmaster scream uh and doc ock if you if they if getting that gold promo that seventh star on them that seventh red star on them is going to allow you to do content that you cannot do right now then yes it'll be worth it but if you're doing well in arena if you're doing well in the raids if your war is pretty good you probably can save your 450 gold promo credits as a character that you're absolutely sure about. Uh, but other than Thanos I, and maybe Mr. Sinister, not not one that I would do. But if 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 you're struggling with certain content, then yeah, definitely do it. But if you're not, save them. There's there's no there's no harm in saving uh, and waiting until there's something that possibly is better down the road. Because especially with these gold promo credits, they're so hard to get. Uh, you don't want to make a mistake on those. So if you're not sure, save. But Thanos, Mr. Sinister are the two uh, top candidates of the of the characters that you mentioned, brother. What is up, Valley? Happy New Year to you and your family, brother. Same to you, brother. I was recently watching a video of your roster reviews with mobile and got my gears working. Have you considered doing roster reviews for people in the community? So this is a big thing, especially uh, in year one of this game, 2018, where a lot of people are doing roster reviews, helping people get their rosters built up. I haven't seen too many content creators do it recently but uh potentially uh if if someone has a good uh, setup that they could share their blue stacks and their camera and all that stuff with me then it could be something that uh, could work but that, that's the main reason i do it omg it's because it's a fun video we know each other we know technically we could work together and uh yeah I, i've never was really good at it but uh, i do it with omg because we could we could talk a lot to each other we know each other pretty well but uh it could be something interesting if you guys do have interest in me doing something like this maybe on a bi-weekly basis or a monthly basis then uh let me know but I, I would need to be working with people that have decent setups with mic quality and all that stuff i, I don't want to just do it with uh random people or maybe maybe sending me screenshots doing something on a live stream one day uh would be would be something fun as well but uh yeah let me let me know if you guys have interest in something like this uh oh my goodness a long question but i did want to read it because it's actually more of a suggestion and i hope scopely is watching but uh this is more of a suggestion of what to do with homeless characters uh my recommendation is for all of them to get a affiliation tag team up as in marvel team up each team up character in combat would get all the affiliation bonuses this would not allow them to unlock challenges or enter raids with affiliation requirements it would not assist others in encountering characters with requirement affiliation tags so three supernatural would not be fulfilled by one of these uh, team up characters uh this would help new players having high star characters to work with others and help old players by having temporary characters to fill in for teams while we wait for the whole team to be released i really like this idea and i hope scopely is watching and stuff because yeah our homeless characters you know spider-man great character but he's homeless right now so he has virtually no use same same with captain marvel there's this there's a few different places to use her but she doesn't have a solid team right now and no matter how good her kid is she's not going to be as good as she once was when she was on a solid team so i like this team up tales uh this team up tag that we we team up tells us something else but i like this team up tag i like this idea hopefully they bring something like this in the game to make our homeless characters a little more viable hey valley happy new year from florida keep on smashing do you think this team would work until x factor is finished maybe the dad bros yelena red guardian and zemo yeah and i guess it depends what mode you're talking about though uh blitz it would work very well 
war on offense would work very well i mean the dad bros are great zemo is a one-man army on war so it would work very very well in those game modes i am not sure about the raids maybe not an ultimate 7.5 or the greeks difficulty 4.3 but maybe some of the lower ones they would work as well i know the dad bros have some survivability uh and uh as far as arena i'm not sure if they could overtake a meta especially with the low yellow stars for the dad bros probably zemo yelena red garden i don't know if they could compete with other teams like black order at low gold star levels but I, I like that team especially as a blitz team or as a war offense team i think they would work very very well they do have some good synergy and we could be a good placeholder so we get the full teams for each of these characters uh or, or at least the full x factor team Happy New Year, bro. I was thinking of a new way to make Dark Dimension viable again. Since Scope has implemented raid difficulty options for all the raids, why not add, add that to Dark Dimension? It would make it so we could replay each of the Dark Dimensions at a higher difficulty what with rewards for each tier. They would set the rewards as a weekly basis, maybe even make it so that you could finally get red stars for Ultron, seven red star ultimate, seven red star doom. What do you think? I'm not sure if I like the red stars uh and maybe making it reset every month or so maybe in alignment with the uh real-time pv or the real-time arena uh, options whenever that season resets reset the dark dimension so we could go in we could play it again we could we could get some first time rewards for difficult different difficulties we could get some you know different uh, little small rewards i don't i don't think uh it would be something big like red stars for these characters but maybe maybe some training orbs or some gold orbs something like that would be nice maybe even a mega orb i know i know mega orbs lose their value a lot but if they were to give something like this i could get possibly 100 shards for a good character or absolutely nothing yeah, I, I would like to see Dark Dimension a little more useful in the game, but I, I probably wouldn't want to reset every week, probably every month or so, just unless unless the rewards are just crap. But I don't know. I, I like I like I like uh, making Dark Dimension more viable though, for instead of just those first two passes. Happy New Year, Valley! I'm currently going to Dark Dimension three for the second time and upgrading characters for Dark Dimension four. I have Sinister and X23 at five red, six yellow stars. Would you focus on bringing the seven stars? or getting gear 15 uniques in the war store if seven stars which would you prioritize so for me i do things a little different i like to finish these characters so as soon as sinister was at that war store i stopped getting the orange gear and started focusing on the stars for sinister i know it's probably slowed me down for getting into dark dimension 3 back in the day but it's kind of how i like to play the game same thing with x23 i could have gotten some of these gear 15 pieces but when she came to the store i started farming her i'm doing the same for minerva now when i have extra uh gear or extra war credits i'm always saving them to make sure that if minerva pops up in the store i'm farming her and then if i have extra and i see one of those gear 15 uniques i'm buying that as well but that's what i'm doing um it is up to you uh neither of those or actually sinister doesn't unlock anybody x23 doesn't lock doc ock so you're getting double value there but sinister is just a great character so uh i i'm not sure what the best method to be but the way that i do it i like to get the shards and complete the characters and then work on the gear but uh, that might slow you down for some of the dd3s and dd4s that you're trying to get through uh greetings from germany hope you had a great new year hope you're uh, you're doing a great job thank you brother uh, i had an idea i would like to know uh what you think about it one of the most recently data mined is White Tiger, who could replace Killmonger on the Wakandan team. One of White Tiger's incarnation that you've mentioned in the last video had a relationship with Black Panther, and I think it would fit thematically. I, I think that would fit as well. I, that's one of the teams that I think White Tiger could fit on, depending which iteration of the White Tiger they go with, because there's, there's I think there's five of them throughout the comic life. Uh, instead of White Tiger and another character take Frank Castle's spot, Misty Knight. She also appeared in the Netflix shows and would fit with the theme of the Defenders. Yeah, we got Misty Knight in there. We have Colleen Wing. We have, uh, I guess, I guess the Claire Temple version of Night Nurse. Uh, there's a few other characters that appeared in that Netflix shows that, that would be fitting as a fifth member of the Defenders. Uh, even, even, uh, Hellcat the the friend of jessica jones could even fit I, patty patty I, I don't remember whatever but all of those could fit into the defenders as well if they don't have white tiger if that data mine was not correct or the thinking of placing her on either wakandans or young avengers or some other team with their new greek difficulties especially gamma where wakanda was added to more nodes i find it logical that the top raid team lives up to its announcement and white tiger could be the key for that it could be the key. he could be the key or she depending which version they do uh but we will see yeah and uh yeah unfortunately i don't think the wakandans are ever gonna be the top rate right team even even with white tiger even with uh some other cool wakandan characters it, i i don't 
think that Un unless unless Black Panther 2 close to the movie something happens and they become top tier again but yeah uh, or not again they, I don't think they ever were top tier but in case they become top tier for that Black Panther 2 movie uh have you heard anything about how we could get the sixth and seventh red star for Ultimus? not yet same thing with Ultron uh I I know with Ultron I think it'd be too powerful if they added red stars Ultimus I don't know even with seventh and six red stars I don't know if it'd be too powerful so I'm not sure why they're holding back on Ultimus, but uh, yeah, I have not heard a thing. Short answer of it. <laughs> hey, Bob, hope the new year, year is starting out well. What do you think is the best ISO for Merc team with Shuri and Killmonger? Got mine's up to 601k. That is that is very scary. So we'll go into the game. I'll show you who I what I have on my Merc team right now. I'm not sure if it's the best version of it, but uh, let, let's go into the game right now. And here we see my Taskmaster here. And as we can see, he is a skirmisher. Uh, Shuri is a healer. Merc Lieutenant is also a healer. Uh, we have Killmonger as a raider because he's still on the team. He's not on my military skill team yet. Merc Radguard is also a healer, and that's that's what I have on my Mercs. If you're not, if you're using some other Mercs though, let me go down for a few more. Deadpool is a raider. Korath is a striker, only at level one though, so I'm not really using him. And Merc Soldier, who I need to build up for this military skill team, is a striker level one. And Bullseye, I don't really use him. I don't have any ISOs on him. So that's that's my Mercs, guys. This is what I use. And Sniper, I don't have any ISO on him as well. And then, like I said, Shuri is a healer. I don't know if that's the best uh, ISOs that you can put on all the teams, but that's what I have on my teams there. Hey, Valley, this is a question about real-time arena. Have we heard anything about once we've gotten through the 100 rewards for Mojo's Mayhem, can we hoard the rewards? Now, by the rewards, I think you're talking about the ratings tokens because uh, from what I understand, I haven't looked at it to confirm, but I still think we get the T1 ions and we still get those L3 training materials. But as far as the rating tokens, I don't think we could hoard them. I don't think we could store them. I think uh, every new season we start again at zero. Uh, the question meaning we cannot accept rewards from daily, weekly objectives. Once we open it, we get to get a new reward card for next month. So yeah, I think you, as far as the rating tokens, once you're at 100, you don't get any until the next uh, season. But I think even by still playing arena battles, because I've still been playing real-time arena battles, even though I've gotten to the level 100, you still get a few of those T1 ions. You still get a few of those L3 training materials. So uh, I think it's still worth it a little bit if you're not spending too much time to play some of these real-time arena matches, even if you're getting not getting these rating tokens. But uh, yeah, I think they're going to reset once the next season rolls around, brother. Valley Flying, two questions. Do you think Iceman or Kitty Pride will have Blitz this patch or that they'll be only wallet farm? I do think they're going to have a Blitz this patch. Uh, for some reason, they, they like releasing characters via Blitz. We've had a few Blitz releases in a row. We just finished with a long shot Blitz release. Uh, today, we're getting Cold Blitz. And then later this week, we're getting the first Yelena Blitz. Next week, the 14th of January, we're getting the second Yelena Blitz. So that's a lot of Blitz release characters. And then uh, we have two, two more Thursdays in January, the 21st and the 28th and if the indication that the blog post was uh saying is correct we're not getting the next update until february so that would make sense to have a character right there on the 21st and the 28th as a blitz release character where there's going to be Iceman or kitty pride not sure maybe one or the other and then uh or maybe neither they may be maybe they're coming up with brand new release method but it really looks like an event character uh release character is going to be red guardian at least according to the data mines so not sure what the next character is going to be maybe an event maybe there'll be an Iceman event or a kitty pride event and the other one will have a blitz but uh yeah the 21st and the 28th look like very likely candidates for that blitz if one of them is going to be blitz release characters second with scopely not fully changing punishers kit over to skeletary do you think we'll see a further rework when more defenders come or that they'll leave him in an awkward limbo not sure but i hope he's not in an awkward limbo i hope he has a solid home on either defenders or skeletary and not leave better options on both teams and just have punisher as a wasted character maybe they give him the marvel team up tag like in one of the previous questions but uh yeah defenders who, who knows when they're going to be released it was indicated in the uh, blog notes or the dev notes when we had that release happen uh, but yeah, we, we don't know what who the characters are going to be. There's been a lot of talk about uh, Moon Knight, about White Tiger, about Hellcat, about Misty Knight, about Colleen Wing, all these characters for the Netflix series or that seem logical because they have series coming out. Uh, 
who knows but uh we'll, we'll see what happens but uh, yeah i definitely hope that they do not leave him in this awkward limbo i hate when they do that to characters and i hate any of these videos but they have to end sometime guys and before i go i do want to thank each and every one of you that left a question on the discord server whether the question got answered or not i do want to thank you guys and if you wanted your question potentially featured in an upcoming monday mailbag guys the link to discord is down below i want to thank all of you guys that are watching this video hopefully i'll see you guys tomorrow for the valley club in the morning guys that is on twitch.valleyflying.com i will see you there a tweet goes out so make sure you're following me on social media as well and i will see you guys next time thank you once again for leaving the questions and i hope you guys have a great 2021 that is it guys before you go watch some of my videos and give me a hulk fist bump <laughs>